welcome! In this video, we'll explore the MVP and farming build for Shures. With this build, we'll be able to not only farm efficiently using Fallen Empire, but also quickly burst down minis and MVPs using Asura Strike, Finger Offensive, and Hellgate. In this video, we'll discuss the most important stats, skills, runes, equipment, cards, and tips for the Shura MVP and farming build. I hope that by the end of this video, you'll have a clearer idea on how to build your Shura for farming, as well as for dealing massive damage. Since this is a detailed video, I'll have timestamps down below. Alright, without further ado, let's begin. Let's first start with a stat build. First off, a lot maximum points on strength. This is our primary stat which will increase melee attack. Prioritize leveling up this stat for higher base damage. Next, manually adjust points to reach a total of 99 dexterity with blessing. Dexterity will increase attack, hit, and chance speed. In addition, we'd need a total of 99 points for the Frost Masquerade Mask attack bonus, which we'll touch on later when we go to equipment. Lastly, a lot of remaining points on intelligence. This increases our magic attack, max SP, and SP recovery speed. We need intelligence to maximize our Asura strike damage as the higher the SP, the higher the damage. Next, let's discuss the most important skills to get. For the Acolyte skills, you should allocate points on Level 10 Blessing to increase strength, dexterity, and intelligence. Level 10 Increase Agility to enhance agility and movement speed. Level 10 Carry Elazon to obtain a shield that blocks damage. And level 10 Maces Mastery to increase attack when using Maces and Knuckles. For the monk skills, you may get Level 5 Call Spirit Stone Lock, Level 1 Zen which will summon 5 Spirit Bombs at a time. Spirit Bombs increase attack and ignore defense. Level 10 Iron Fist to increase attack and auto attacks when using Knuckles. Level 5 Critical Explosion to increase critical, attack, and auto attacks. Level 5 Asura Strike which is one of our main skills for this video. This is a burst damage skill which will consume all SP and deal neutral damage. Level 3 Spirit's Recovery to restore HP and SP even if under the Critical Explosion state or the Asura Strike penalty. Level 1 Body Relocation Farm Ability and Level 3 Investigate to unlock a champion skill later on. As for the remaining 7 points, you can allocate it on any skill of your choice, but I'd recommend putting it on Level 1 Ruwak for visibility against hiding enemy units. Level 5 Light Shield for protection against range attack. And lastly, Level 1 Holy Light Strike as this may be useful in PvP to expel Kiri Elason. As for the champion skills, you should prioritize getting Level 10 Spirit Bomb Refining to increase the attack and death penetration of Spirit Bombs. In addition, there is a 10% attack boost for each Spirit Bomb used for Finger Offensive, which we'll touch on shortly. Level 10 Critical Explosion Break to add 10 strength while in the Critical Explosion state. Level 5 Fist Refining to increase attack when using Knuckles. And Level 5 Finger Offensive which is an attack skill which shields 300% range attack damage. For the next 10 skill points, you may allocate it on any skill of your choice. But as a guidance, you may consider the following. Level 5 Blade Stop which can trigger the no move status wherein both the monk and the attacker cannot move. However, the monk is able to use certain skills. Level 5 Key Explosion which is an active skill which deal damage and knock enemies with a percent chance to stun. If neither of those interests you, you may allot the remaining 10 points on Preemptive Strike to increase attack speed. Once you've reached Job Breakthrough, you may allocate additional skill points on the following. Level 10 Asura Strike which will now ignore a percentage of the target's race, attribute, and damage reduction. Level 10 Finger Offensive which will now deal 400% damage. Level 20 Maces Mastery which would increase attack by 60 points, increase auto attacks by 400 points, and increase damage by 10 points when using gloves. Level 15 Blessing which would give additional 25 points of strength, Dexterity and Intelligence And lastly, level 15 Curie Elazon for defense Alright, now for the surest skills, you should prioritize getting Level 3 Dragon Combo to unlock Level 5 Fallen Empire, which would be our main farming skill for this video Then get level 3 Tiger Cannon to unlock Level 10 Hellgate This is an active skill which will launch an instant flurry of attacks on a single target Note that the damage will be doubled if used after Fallen Empire 
Next, get level 3 Near Death Awaken to unlock level 10 Rising Dragon, which will summon and increase the number of spirit bombs, increase max HP and SP, and increase attack speed. In total, level 10 Rising Dragon will summon 15 spirit bombs. Furthermore, it will also activate a critical explosion state. Alright, these are the notable skills that we should prioritize. You are free to allot the remaining skill points whichever way you like. As a suggestion, you may go for level 3 Transcendence to remove status ailments and level 3 Gentle Touch Cure for survivability. However, if you can one-hit mobs using only level 3 Fallen Empire instead of level 5, allot the remaining points on Gentle Touch Cure. Alright, before we continue, if you guys would like a more detailed explanation and demo of all the Shura skills, I've recently made a Shura skills demo and I'll have that link down below if you're interested. Okay, moving on, now that we're done with the skills, let's dive into the notable runes. First up, we have the Asura Strike Empower, which will increase the multiplier of the Asura Strike formula by 0.6. There are 16 runes for this, giving us a total of 9.6 multiplier. Up next, we have Finger Offensive Quick Cast which reduces the fixed cast time of finger offensive by 0.25 seconds. There are two runes for this giving us less 0.5 seconds fixed cast time. Up next, Iron Fist Empower will give plus 20% attack for Iron Fist. There are three runes for this giving us 60% additional attack for Iron Fist. Next, we have the Neutral Damage runes which will give plus 1% neutral attack. There are 3 runes for this in the Shura Aesir, giving us 3% additional neutral attack. Next, we have 2 sets of Hellgate runes. First, Hellgate Enhance will give additional 6% damage for Hellgate. There are 6 runes for this, giving us additional 35% damage for Hellgate. Lastly, we have Hellgate Mastery, which will give 0.3% extra damage for every 1% HP loss. There are 3 runes for this giving us 0.9% extra damage for every 1% HP loss. Next, let's dive into the recommended equipment set and cards. First up, for the weapon, it is ideal to get a plus 10 double solid giant gloves. This will give plus 10 strength and plus 15% damage to large size monsters. In addition, every refinement level will give plus 2% damage to large size monsters. Level it up to tier 4 for bonus damage on both large and middle sized monsters as well as bonus attack. For the cards, it would depend on your target. For large sized monsters, you may inlay 2 Minoris cards for bonus damage. However, note that if you'll primarily be using Hellgate or Finger Offensive, depositing a third Minoris card would give plus 50% ignore defense. For the middle sized monsters, a Skeleton Worker card would be ideal. However, for PvP, you may use the higher Jakari for additional damage against the demi-human race. Next, for the offhand, get an Evil Bracer for additional fee, max HP, and SP. Refine it to plus 10 and level it up to tier 4 for additional 5% melee attack. As an alternative, you may also opt for the Rasa Bracelet for a plus 25% ignore defense. For the armor, get a Staunch Clothes which will give plus 1 dex, plus 2 int, and immunity to the fear effect. Upgrading its gear would give various additional effects. Notably, at tier 6 would have an increase in damage multiplier of the Asura Strike, while at tier 10 would have plus 50% damage multiplier for Hellgate. Furthermore, will have bonus HP at refining plus 10, and bonus attack and damage to large sized monsters at refining plus 15. Inlay an Archer Skeleton Star card for plus 2 strength and plus 5% attack. For the garment, use an Ancient Cape for plus 15 ignore defense. For the foot gear, the rune boost is recommended for the plus 3% attack. In addition, it will also give additional movement speed and healing received. As an alternative, you may offer the mama shoes for the movement speed, additional HP, and SP. Inlay a Zoe card to increase max SP and for the plus 2 on SP region. Next, for the accessories, you may offer the Sun Shrink for the bonus multiplier for Asura Strike. In addition, it will give additional HP, SP, and healing received. Upgrading its here would also give bonus attack. You may also go for the Luna Bridge for additional SP and SP region. Note that any other accessory may also be suitable if it has a good sharp blade or physical damage increase enchantment. 
for the cards, depending on your target, you may inlay an Ultraman card for plus 8% damage to Brute and Demon Monsters, or a Kaha card for additional damage to Earth Monsters. You may also invest in an extra slotted accessory with a Marine Sphere card for the ability to use Magnum Break for additional percent attack. Later on, when we get to the tips, we'll demonstrate how to use this during battle. For the headwear, the recommended item would be a plus 10 helmet of Orc Hero. It gives plus 2 strength and bit and plus 10% melee damage when refining reaches plus 10. As an alternative, we can offer the golden antenna from the Juna quests, as this gives additional attack, strength, and plus 2% penetration. Inlay an Andre Star card for plus 3% penetration and plus 3% ignore death when strength or dex reaches 225. You may also offer an Incubus card for plus 200 SP and plus 15% SP region. Again, note that more SP would translate to more damage for a Sura Strike. For the face, the Frost Masquerade Mask would give attack points and percent attack bonuses. Remember earlier we manually adjusted our dexterity to 99. This is to add to the Frost Focus stack which would give attack plus 10 and attack plus 1% per stack. You may also go for the Hockey Mask especially when against demi-human monsters and bosses. For the mouth, you may opt for the Dream Leaf Silk for the plus 4% physical penetration and the chance to freeze targets. Other mouth items with bonus attacks such as the Chocolate Donuts would be suitable alternatives. For the back, you may go for the Devil Wing for plus 1 on all attributes and plus 5% damage. Lastly, for the tail, the ideal item is a Guts Wing 1 for the Warrior's bonus attack. However, since this is a limited edition item, other damaging adding tail would also be suitable. Alright, now that we've set everything up, let's head on to the farming. Our main skill for farming would be Fallen Empire. For the auto skill slot, prepare Rising Dragon, Blessing, then Fallen Empire. It is best to target small monsters as the Knuckle has a 75% size penalty for medium monsters and a 50% size penalty for large monsters. So mobs such as a Christmas cookie from the Toy Factory, and the Mar mod from the Angbrook field would be ideal. However, if you do have enough damage, you may also target the Geographer from the Angbrook field. Now let's try this build against MVPs. First off, we'll be using Asura Strike. To maximize our Asura damage, take note of the following. Eat Strength Meal and Original Will Ice Cream for the bonus damage against boss monsters. Next, always use the Expert Precision Stone to cancel the size penalty of the Knuckles. Remember that we have a 50% size penalty for large size monsters. If you have a white smith in the party, the weapon perfection buff would also work. Next, make sure to have SP Discharge as Asura has a penalty for SP regen after casting. Having SP Discharge will help regain SP back. Also, make sure to have full SP as the damage of Asura is based on your current SP. The higher the SP, the higher the damage. Next, for the order of skills, use Rising Dragon, Blessing, then equip your accessory with the Marine Sphere card. Make sure to have Magnum Break ready in your skill slot. After activating Magnum Break, quickly switch back to your original accessory and quickly cast a Sura Strike before the 10 second effect wears off. This will allow us to further boost the Sura damage. Lastly, of course, Lex Aterna will double the damage dealt and will help us one hit even those higher level MVPs. Alright, now aside from Asura, the Finger Offensive skill can also deal burst damage and can be used with Asura as a combination against boss monsters. Just cast Finger Offensive first, then follow it up with Asura. This will give the fastest damage per second. This can be an option, especially if no Lex Eterno will be used against the target. Lastly, aside from Asura and Finger Offensive, Hellgate can also find utility against MVPs. It has the potential to deal higher damage versus the Asura, especially if the Asura's HP bar is low. Remember that for Hellgate, the lower the HP, the higher the damage. Just cast Fallen Empire first, then Lex Eterna, then finally Hellgate. This is the best combination as Fallen Empire will double the damage dealt by Hellgate. Both Finger Offensive and Hellgate are long-range skills, and both can be affected by Elemental Converters, thus boosting our damage dealt. Alright, so far we've gone through the most important stats, 
skills, runes, equipment, cards, and tips for the sure farming and MVP build. With this build, we are able to efficiently one-hit mobs as well as deal huge damage against minis and MVPs. Before I end this video, I'd like to give special thanks to my guildmate Eldwin for his substantial contribution in the making of this video. Alright, that's it for this video guys, don't forget to like if you enjoyed watching this guide. If you're new here, I would like you to consider subscribing by hitting the subscribe button down below. I would love to have you back. Thank you for watching, and see you in our next episode.